If you have never had an American Express credit card in the past, or maybe you've not had one for a while and you're thinking you're going to get one again, then you look at the website, you see all these different options, and it could potentially be a bit overwhelming, maybe a little bit confusing because there are so many choices and they all work differently. Some of them will earn cash back, some will earn Amex points, some will earn Avios points. Some of them will be free, some of them will have a fee, some of them will be free in the first year and then have a fee after that. Some of them might have travel insurance, some of them might let you have a two for one uh, flights. So many different options that you could be going for that, yeah, how do you choose? Well, I would ignore all that noise, on the whole at least anyway, and I would focus instead on one feature which Amex does better than anyone else, and this is the welcome bonus. Now, this is why I said at the beginning, if you're new to American Express or haven't had one for a while, because this is something which is reserved for newbies. The vast majority of the cards, there are some exceptions, and this is really important, I'll come back to it later on, but the vast majority of the American Express credit cards, these welcome bonuses are only for people who have not had an American Express card in their name in the last two years. Now, in your name means you are the account holder. If someone else has been the account holder and they've given you a supplementary card, even if the, your card, your name was written on the card, you're not the account, you haven't got a card in your name, okay? You're eligible. But this is really, really important. As long as that's you, then these welcome bonuses, at their very lowest, can be worth 100 quid. When they're boosted, and this often happens, they increase the value of them for short periods of time or you stack them with different offers, potentially you're looking at a couple of hundred quid, maybe even more. And other than bank switching, this is one of the most lucrative ways to make some money. And I said I'd come back to it in a minute, there are a couple of exceptions. Because although most cards, that is the rule, there are two cards out there where you can get a welcome bonus, even if you already have an Amex or have had one in the last two years. But there are some cards which would exclude you from that. So, on that basis, I think you need to approach that very, very, very first card strategically because I think as long as you're going to be eligible for those different cards, and we'll come back to that in a second and meet the criteria for those different offers, then you want to make sure that very first Amex you get is one that does not rule you out of another bonus here and another bonus there, potentially. Okay, not everyone's going to be able to do this. This might not be down your street, but I think it's a great way to stack it up and get as much as you possibly can uh, from American Express. Before we go into those individual cards, I very quickly want to run down a, a couple of really key rules here, which I know I've sort of told you guys about a number of times, but it's so vital that uh, it's really, really worth all stressing it again. First of all, before you apply for any credit card, Amex or anyone else, make sure you do an eligibility search first of all. This is where you will go to either directly to the Amex website or I think even better, a comparison site where you'll see all the different cards all at once. You will go in there and you will give all your details and they will do what's called a soft check on your credit report. This is something that will not appear to anybody else unless you then decide to progress to a full application, in which case a hard search is done on your credit report. Now, this is really important because if you just went blindly in and applied for any old card and made a full application and you got rejected, well, that rejection is there on your credit report. And every time there's a hard search, it means it's harder for you to then get something else. If you've been rejected, well, you're probably going to apply for a different card after that. And that means it's harder to get that. And it could be rejected for that as well. But this eligibility search will tell you your chance of acceptance. And you can use that to kind of make an educated guess of, is it worth me applying for this particular card over that card? Because it may well be that your salary is not enough for some of the more premium Amex cards. That's something they introduced in 2023. You might have to have a slightly above average earnings in the UK to get some of those premium cards. Or it might be they just don't like the look of you on some cards. They're only going to give you uh, one of the sort of the sort of lower end, less lucrative ones. Uh, but again, it's really, really important you do that and then choose if you're going to apply for one, then do the full search. So that's really, really, really important. You also uh, need to be checking those individual American Express credit card uh, kind of eligibility as well. I've touched on some of those things there like salary, uh, but do just do a double, double, double check that those cards and any offer requirements, and we'll talk about some of those in more detail in a minute, you can meet them. Because for many of these welcome bonuses, there is going to be a, a threshold spend that you need to hit to trigger the bonus. If you spend a penny less in the vast majority of the cases, not all of them, but the vast majority of them, you don't get that bonus at all. And what you don't want to be doing is going for a card where it would be a massive stretch for you to meet that spending and then spend money you couldn't would normally spend or even can't afford to spend in order to trigger a bonus because that's just 
you're spending money to get some money back, but really you're ending up uh, neutral. You might even be spending more than you get back. So really, really important you just check the terms and conditions of those offers as well as the cards. Once you get accepted for a card and you go for these offers and you're going for it, uh, similar to what I was saying there about not overspending, do just make sure it's just everyday spending you're putting on these cards because despite getting this welcome bonus, despite the ongoing cashback and rewards you might be getting, if you don't, can't afford it, or you forget to pay it off every single month, you're going to get charged interest. So yeah, make sure you set up a direct debit or a reminder in your calendar to ensure you are completely clearing the statement when it comes in to avoid those interest charges. And again, making sure you don't spend more than you can afford so there's enough money in your account to cover those costs. They're the really, really vital things to be uh, considering before we talk about those different cards. So where do we start? As I said, there are a huge number of cards to be looking at. And I think for most of you, the cards you're going to be considering are probably the ones which are paying the most money. And the one which I think is quite popular, it's a decent card in the first year at least, second year is very expensive, is the American Express Preferred Rewards Gold credit card. Because that can potentially, uh, when it is boosted, when it is increased temporarily, you could be looking at getting 100 and sort of 80 quid, maybe up to 200 quid, depending on the size of that bonus. Uh, if you convert, co convert the Amex points you've got into Avias points and then into Nectar points. It's a, not a difficult thing to do, but that's the way to get the best value from them. And kind of, again, you know, get potentially 180, 200 quid back from that card. I wouldn't go for that one. And that is because that is one of the cards that rules you out later on of a second welcome bonus. So again, I would steer clear of that for the first time if you think you can. Uh, we'll be able to do these additional steps to get more than one welcome bonus. I'd also steer clear of the American Express Platinum Cashback Everyday credit card, another really popular one that people go for, because this is fee-free. There's no charge for this. The problem with this is, in order to get any cash back on that card, you have to spend at least £3,000 on it over the year. You might think that's fine. No problem with that. But the cashback rates are much, much lower than you're going to get on other Amexes and alternatives such as the Chase debit card. Now, if you're going to earn, use the car which earns you the most every single uh, time you spend, for the bulk of your spending, such as Chase or another Amex, where it might be, then you might not even get anywhere close to that three grand. So you might not trigger any cash back, including that bonus. So I would steer clear of those two, which sadly they'd often be the most popular ones, but I would steer clear of those. Instead, the two cards that I would look at, and either of these are absolutely fine, are the American Express Nectar credit card, or the American Express Platinum Cashback Credit Card. Now, both of these um, are decent ones to go for, uh, but they do not say do not rule you out of any potential bonuses later on. So let's talk first of all about that Nectar American Express Credit Card. This one is free in the first year as well, so there's no problems going for that one. Uh, it is £30 after that a year, uh, so you might want to only have this for one year. Uh, I should say with this card, in fact, all the cards I'm going to talk about now are pretty much all of them. If you do go via a cashback site like Quidco or Top Cashback or via a refer a friend link, I would compare them to see which one's paying the most. You can often get a bit more money back as well uh, on top when you first apply to really boost how much you're going to get. Now, the standard welcome offer on this card is 20,000 Nectar points if you spend £2,000 in the first three months. Uh, and that one is one of the lowest spending thresholds, two grand in three months. That makes it quite accessible to everyone. Ongoing, it's pretty decent for the rest of the year as well. Two Nectar points for every pound you spend, which is the equivalent of 1% back. So that's a good, solid one. It's very, very, very rarely uh, boosted in value, so you're not going for it any time. There's no point waiting for it to be increased. The alternative one, the America's Platinum Cashback Credit Card. This does have a £25 fee every year from year one, but again, you can wipe that out if you go via a cashback site. Now, this one's potentially uh, more uh, an easier one as well if you're worried about how much you're going to spend, because this one does not have a minimum spend to trigger the whole bonus. You will get 5% on the first £2,500 you spend in the first three months. That gives you a slightly lower maximum earning of this of 125 quid. But let's say you spend two grand on it, just two grand, well, you'll still get some of the bonus. You'll get £100 back. So that is a good one to go for. Slightly lower ongoing cashback rates, 0.75% on the first 10 grand you spend a year. Then just jump up to 1.25% on ongoing spending. But I absolutely would go for one of these two cards as the first one, because that means you get a decent welcome bonus between 125 and 146 quid ish. And you can then go on to one of these other cards subsequently. So there's two very, very good options for your first ever American Express credit card. What I want to talk about now is what happens next. Because the reason I've told you about these ones is because they don't rule you out of future bonuses. Well, what are those potential bonuses? What cards are they? 
Well, there's two of them. One is the American Express Platinum credit card and the other is the British Airways American Express Premium Plus credit card. Now, these are gonna have quite high fees. The Platinum has 650 quid a year. The BA Premium Plus Amex is 250 quid a year. And the rules that are changing at some point in 2024, probably in the spring, means you won't be able to get a pro rata refund on those fees. So you are locked into those for a full year. That's really hefty and you pay them up front. So I'd only be going for these two cards when the welcome bonus is boosted. And that means you don't get the normal with a platinum, it's normally 25,000. Instead, you're looking for at least 50, if not 60, 70 or 80,000 points. Ideally, that's 70 to 80,000 point level. And for the British Airways Premium Plus, again, not that normal level of 25,000 Avios, you want 50, 60, 70,000 Avios points because the more points you get in those boosted offers, you're going to be making more of a profit once you take into account those fees. Now, uh, I'll kind of be very clear here as well why uh, I'll select those first two cards because the Platinum Amex card, you're ruled out of getting that if you have had the Gold or the Amex Rewards card or even the Platinum itself in the last two years. Hence why I didn't recommend you going for the Amex Gold in the first place. If you don't think you are ever going to go for this Platinum card, again, I have spoken about it before, how complicated it can be in order to get profit from this when the bonus is increased, then maybe going for the gold card for one year is not a bad option because you will get more money for it. But if you look into it and you know watch or listen or read to the other content I've done about the Platinum offers when they're boosted, uh, and you think you could go for it and you think your salary is going to be enough and all those kind of things, then absolutely I would avoid gold so you can take advantage of this. Now the other one, uh, the British Airways uh, Premium Plus Amex, the only cards that rule you out of getting the welcome bonus on this card are the uh, BA Amex, the free version, or the BA Amex Premium Plus itself. So again, if you're not worried about that Platinum card, you could instead go for the Amex Gold, Preferred Rewards Gold in the first case, and still be eligible to get this Premium Plus card. So really, if you are interested in the Premium Plus offer, again, get those bonus Avios points and potentially two for one flights uh, with British Airways, uh, then again, you could go for any card other than the BA ones. Um, but they're kind of really important. I think they're the kind of the ones to, to, to look at and rule out. And there is one more to tell you about. And there's just only a small number of you are going to be able to potentially get this welcome bonus. But if you are eligible for it, it doesn't matter which Amex you've had in the last two years, if any at all, right? And this is the Vitality American Express credit card. This is only available to people who get life or health insurance via Vitality. So if you get that via your workplace like I do, then this is definitely worth taking a look at. But I would wait to get it until you have taken advantage of that very, very, very first offer. This should not be your first card. This should be your second, third, or fourth card. This one will give you a £100 statement credit if you spend two grand in the first three months. So that is an opportunity that you can get, say, potentially your first welcome offer from, uh, I would say, the Nectar or the Platinum Cashback or potentially the Gold if you're not interested in the Platinum card. That's your first card to go for. Then look at the Platinum, then the BA, and then the Vitality in any kind of order on those last three. Now, once you have triggered the bonus on those cards, the thing to bear in mind here is at the end of that first year, is there going to be a fee that comes in? And that fee, in most cases, is going to mean you're not going to want to keep that card going forward, even for ongoing spending, even if there are fantastic rewards in the vast majority of cases. So this is about your first card for the first year. Then I'd be looking to cancel it or potentially downgrade it to a different card, a different option, uh, and then it's about a different kind of kettle of fish there. Then it is looking at what has the best cashback or rewards or the best extra perks and things. And I'll be talking about that another time. My name's Andy Webb. Thank you so much for watching. Check out these videos here for more ways to make the most from your credit card.